Good morning, everybody. It is uh, April 26th. Um, we actually are loading grills here today. So uh, we loaded two yesterday. Maybe it was three yesterday. And uh, we finally got some of the kinks worked out of everything for loading. So I thought, hey, we should do a video. So uh, we got Marlo. He is uh, a new driver here for us. He's going to be here just for the seeding season, I do believe. And uh, right now he's loading up his nitrogen. So I can't remember if I told you this or not, but if I haven't, I'll refresh it. Normally, the whole back trailer is nitrogen. Well, it's kind of our mid-row blend, nitrogen sulfur. And then the front trailer is uh, seed and foss. So on hopper one, so that's four hoppers that it says here, basically one, two, three, four, right? Right. So hoppers two and three are the smallest. You can put the most legally in hopper one and hopper four. So you need to know about, you need to know how many pounds of product, seed, floss, and nitrogen mid-row blend that you want to put down so that way you can load your Super B uh, legally and get the most bang for your buck. Again, I'm sorry about the wind. It is supposed to get up to 70K again today. That doesn't surprise you guys. Any video that Mike does, expect wind. And I do have my mic and hand me and everything on. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, going back to the truck. Let's climb up here. So he's just loading his nitrogen. So, since we have... Oh, hold on. So, since we have so much nitrogen, fertilizer and boss left in our soil because we had a crazy drought next last year. We are putting on way, way, way less. So that's going to change up how we want to load our super beef. So instead of all nitrogen being in the back trailer like last year, we're going to put all seed in the back trailer. Only one hopper of nitrogen and then just a little bit of phosphate. So this nitrogen is a nitrogen sulfur blend. We call it the mineral blend. It goes down our mineral banner normally. So for every one, uh, sorry, for every six pounds of uh, nitrogen, we're putting down one pound of sulfur. walk down here so all these hopper bins are holding our uh, fertilizer and seed Nor normally we can't hold everything so and that's fine you just keep getting it hauled in as you seed it out like why buy enough bins for all your storage if you don't need to buy enough for maybe half two thirds your storage and then we have an auger set up and then we just got guys hauling it in from the terminals and dropping it in our bins Storage for us is always short. We don't have enough storage for seed and fert, and we definitely don't have enough storage for actual harvest time. But it's a work in progress. Oh, I don't know where I'm going here. This is our FOSS on the conveyor. The reason why we use the auger for the nitrogen down there, because sometimes that stuff can be quite clumpy. Uh, so we like to chew it up a little bit uh, with the uh, auger, especially if you have any fertilizer from last year, some carryover that is guaranteed to be a little bit on the chunky side. So by augering, it kind of breaks up some of those chunks. Phosphate's way better, stores way better, augers way better, so we just use the conveyor. Am I concerned about breaking the prills in the auger? Yeah, I am concerned about it at times. And then when you're cleaning off the grate of the conveyor on your uh, seat cart, and you're like, gosh, we gotta chew this freaking stuff up a little bit more, guys. Guys, we gotta chew it up. No, it's actually pretty tough. Let's go over here and bug Jared. I feel like he's trying to butt ahead of the line here. Are you trying to butt ahead of me, sir? Nope. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, I just wondered. I was like, we gotta go give this Jared guy a hard time here. Just getting ready. We just know? gotta. We gotta bug this guy. Getting ready to roll. <laughs> 
Hey, uh, is it going to be Battle of the Two Tracks this spring or what? I honestly don't know who's going to work. Well, that's a very good question. We break up into two teams. Uh, but I think maybe we're just going to draw a straw see who's going with who. Keep it interesting. Always on the FOSS. We better head over there and show you guys the phosphate. So you guys might have a few questions like, Mike, do you guys just load the puppies ring to ring and head out? Uh, no, we load them by their gauges and as legal as we can try and get. Sometimes that's hard. The odd time though, we have we've totally loaded them, but uh, the roads are too soft. So this is uh, this isn't anything fancy. It's just your standard 1152, and uh, we have some pot ash in here as well. Take a look here. So I believe the pot ass to be this uh, pinkish red stuff that you see. is we'll uh, load the seed. And we do treat all of our seed. We're gonna uh, just talk about this seed treatment here for a second while you can probably hear me before this auger actually fires up. So basically, we treat all of our seed for multiple reasons. So this stuff here is going on the Durham and uh, this is an, a seed treat. Okay, it's a product from Syngenta. And uh, here, I'll just try and zoom in on this a little bit here. So the groups here, they're fungicide groups. Three, four, seven, and 12. Now these are just fungicide groups, not to be confused with insecticides. You can put insecticides, you can get this with uh, Cruiser, which is an insecticide for like uh, um, worms or uh, whatever it might else. So, and we're not doing that. We're just putting down for the fungicide to treat for disease, like your root rots, um, blah, 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 cesarium, whatever it might be, right? So here's the thing. If you, if you just put bare seed in the ground, uh, it will rot quicker. Basically, just think of you, we're putting a coat on it, right? We're putting a toque on this stuff. It's basically, at the end of the day, all we're doing. If you were to run outside and it's cold outside and say it's minus 30 with the wind blowing, you're going to get your ears a little cold and you're going to freeze them off. But if you wear a toque, you, they still might get cold, but you're going to be able to be out there for a lot longer period. That's all we're trying to do. So we're, we're seeding right now into cold soil. And uh, we want that, that, of course the crop isn't gonna grow. Those seeds aren't gonna sprout in germinate until that uh, soil temperature reaches a certain point and it warms up. So we want that to be sitting in the ground until it warms up without having any risk of rot or losing vigor. Vigor is another thing is uh, basically vigor in, in a nutshell is like the mm, to get it out of the ground, right? So the longer it sits in the cold ground, it loses its mm, to get it out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't even do that without cracking up. <laughs> and this stuff is just kind of like another uh, nutrient type package that we're throwing on. Um, oh, and I got a call. Oh, it's Big Frank. I better take this one. I haven't talked to him. I got to see if he's in another country here. Big Frank says hi to everybody. Uh, he hasn't been here since last fall. He's actually was up vlogging up there in the mountains. Uh, Northern Alberta, I do believe. I think he might be on break up right now. But anyways, he says hi to everybody. Uh, he's a really close friend of mine. We've traveled all over together. Uh, really close with Big Frank. And Lee's also not here in case you... He's working with another farm closer to where his family is. Totally understandable. And uh, a lot of people think we're brothers, Lee and I. Ah, uh, we're not blood brothers, actually. We're brothers like friends, I guess you could say, but we're not blood brothers. But uh, anyways, let's talk about the seed treater. So, obviously, we had a little, uh, we had a little malfunction at the junction. You know, first day of seeding, first couple days of seeding, there's always the jitters and breakdowns and catastrophes and stuff that happens. We actually uh, blew a line <laughs> and filled our gauge up here too. And uh, we were throwing this stuff all over the place as you can see. 
and it's just very sticky. It's kind of like fertilizer, liquid fertilizer almost. That's kind of what it feels like. It isn't liquid fertilizer, but it feels like that. It's kind of sticky. But anyways, these pumps are just roller pumps. Nothing fancy about them. And uh, it just rolls it and it just draws it out of these tubes. And then up, up it goes. Nothing fancy about it. So some people, oh, he's coming. Some people pre-treat all their seed. What I mean by that is they'll use this or they'll get somebody in and they'll treat it all and they'll put it in their bins and they'll do that during the winter. So all they actually have to do is put an auger underneath their bins and then boom, you're going. It's, it's a lot quicker actually. When you're treating into the truck like what we're doing, it is slower. But there's pros and cons and there's pros and cons to everything and every operation is totally run different and that's actually okay. The pro to uh, treating into the truck is you keep all your bins clean. Uh, we use all these bins for harvest as well. I gotta keep moving so that way uh, you guys can still hear me. We use all these bins at harvest time and if you have any seed treat dust, stain, whatever, it might be in the, in the wrinkle of a kernel, they will reject your whole load, they'll reject your whole bin. It is a serious thing. You can't have, I mean like zero, you can't, and, and totally makes sense, right? So that means you gotta get in and you gotta wash all your bins and clean them out really, 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 really good and not, 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 and like I mean really good. And well, that's just more work than what it's worth and uh, so we just treat right into the bin, or bin, truck, and we never have to worry about that. Easy peasy, life is breezy. So yeah, and Mike, why do you have PTO shafts and batteries by your bins? Hey, I'm surprised we don't have like engines and leftover vehicles beside these things. That battery we just had to change out yesterday. PTO shafts, don't even get me going on that. Old fertilizer clumps from last year, if we had any carried over, and I'm telling you, it's always a fun time around here. So we're treating our Durham. We're, we're giving all these little kernels toots, is all we're doing. We're giving them toots, and we're giving them energy drinks. Toots and energy drinks. So that way they can sit out there, they can grow strong. Oh. He forgot to turn on his meter. Oh, maybe he didn't. Maybe he's actually moving. So, you, you gotta do two things up here. You gotta turn the auger on first. Good. And then, I'm gonna wait. There we go. Maybe you actually gotta turn on your meter. Last year on Durham to this year on Durham. 
The environment can change your rates. The cost can change your rates. There's a lot of things that can come into, there's a lot of factors, I should say, a lot of factors. And don't get me wrong, farmers aren't just throwing stuff on their crops, chemicals and whatnot, just for all willy-nilly sakes. We're doing it for a reason. Like, man, you can burn up $10,000 per coat pretty dang easy. Pretty dang easy. You know, uh, speaking of the old school way of doing this, like this is, you know, we've been running, this is called a storm seed feeder. We've been running them now for quite a few years, but prior to having one of this, Rick, I think we just used jugs and uh, plunged the hole in with a screwdriver so that way it could air. You have to turn it upside down with a little tube and you just sat underneath the hopper bin when it was coming out on just your standard regular auger with a little valve on the end. And then somebody was up here doing the hole too red, not red enough. And uh, you just adjusted the valve to the full or you, you know, sped up the bushel for an uh, hour coming out of your auger. And that's how we did it. Now we have all this technology. You can take this, take that, multiple products, find everything, you know, get it right down to, like, everything to, like, milliliters per kg and all that fun stuff. I'm just trying to do those conversions, I'm telling you. Give you a headache. And yet I still come up here after you spend all that money, and I'm like, yeah, it's too red, not red enough. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, you guys get the idea. I'm going to let you go. Have yourself a good one. And uh, let's start loading some drills. Adios.